Okay, today I thought I'd talk to you about my patient who is a rower and is getting hip impingement through a cam type deformity. Now, she's 22 and she's already got massive joint pain in her hip. So when she came to see me, she was getting pain after being on an erg just like this. Now, she's a surf boat rower, had no problem in the surf, but when she went on the erg, she started getting issues. And we're gonna talk about why and how we fixed it. So first up, Otto Erg, what she was doing, and she's an elite rower, right? She is top-notch rower, so her form is great. There's nothing wrong with that. She's really good, but she was getting pain in the off-season because in the off-season, they come out of the surf boats and they go in ergs. Now with her, in an erg, you are straight with your knees. This is the trick. In a surf boat, now she is pulling from this side, right, because they have one oar each. She was over that side. So to get to that, what we worked out is when they go to the catch, this leg went outwards, okay? Now she was getting pain in her right hip. Now on a surf boat, the leg goes outwards, she's going to there, she has no problems. In an erg, the feet are straight, okay? The knees are straight. So when she was having doing this, she was not doing that. Now, she only got the problem after being on the erg. So what we realized is, it was partly a form issue that was giving her problems, but when we examined her hip, she had lost all her, what we call F-A-D-I-R range, so flexion, adduction, internal rotation. That was really painful, really sore. Now, she was getting better with some stretching, some traction of the hip, and some belt release, and all sorts of stuff. She was getting that a little bit better, but we still sent her for MRI because it still wasn't adding up. Now, it came back with a cam deformity. That means the neck of her femur is thicker and had a bump on that side. That's a congenital thing. So imagine she was fine in a surf boat, but then when she gets to her, she's got problems. So as soon as she went straight, she ran out of range, started jamming that hip, started causing problems. Now, no labral tear, only inflammation in the hip. So the scope of getting her better was quite good. So I'll show you what we did and how it improved it. Okay, so we're gonna use Joe here as an example because my patient's not here today, but with her hip, when we got to about sort of 90 degrees, we got a little bit of resistance. Definitely when we get to 110, then it was blocking, okay? So at that point there, she wasn't too sore, but as soon as I rotate her in, Bang, there the pain was. So she had a positive FADIR. So not a Faber, not this one. This one was absolutely fine. It was in here, coming around, into that interaction. All that was really sore, all blocked, all spasmy. So she there's a point where she would jump all the way through there, okay? Now, obviously that MRI came back with a positive. So, you know, we know there's some restriction in range there, but having a cam to 40 does not give that sort of range. So a lot of that, was spasm, inflammation, pain. And it did say there was a fusion in the joint, but no tearing, no other damage, no real damage, just a sore hip. So what we did is to try and get rid of all the stiffness that had developed. Remember, she'd come to see me six months of having this. So imagine what sort of changes have happened through the hip locally in the joint, tightness, weakness, also muscle guarding, changes up here, central nervous system, fearful about it. So there's a lot of things we need to do to try and improve her range in her joint to allow this thing to get better. So one thing we do work on quite a lot is seatbelt traction to try and improve the range. Stretch very, very deep down in the joint to get her being able to get more movement out of the hip because it wasn't getting any better by staying stiff. We had to get this thing moving. So for her, what I'd be working on is getting the traction of this belt in this sort of inferior lateral direction, okay? So imagine in line with that neck of the femur almost. So from here, just tighten this up a bit on Joe here. I'd put her right into the point where we get almost where the pain is. Okay, so right into that adduction and then work on traction that way there, which, you know, for her was extremely relieving. So that was like, what's that like? That's a really relieving stretch, not an aggravating stretch. Now, as we got better over the weeks, we could get her into more like this sort of position, okay? We could work on external rotation. We could work on sort of more internal rotation, finding all the areas. So we worked on mobilizing our either repetitions like this, we would pull into that position there, or, and, 
we get into that position and then roll through that way in that position, okay? So you're trying to get more and more range out of the joint in all the areas that it was stiff, but being very careful that we didn't drop into pushing it and making it worse, okay? It's very easy to be able to jam that joint up and make it sore, so we had to be very careful how much we did, always on the limit of our range. So we're doing a lot of that stuff in the clinic. Now, the way we replicated that, because of course, if that made her feel better, you know, we do some of that for 20 minutes and all of a sudden, oh, I feel better, she needs to do that at home, okay? So we need to give her stretches and exercises to do at home while she wasn't seeing me to make those gains continue. So I'll show you what we did with that. What we did to replicate the seat belt was to use a power band, of course, around something that doesn't move. Now, we were gonna work on some hip flexion, a bit of hip flexion stuff because she was tight there anyway, but also trying to get her range back that we tested in there. So the first thing I got her working on was her classic hip flexion ER. So on her right hip, again, thinking where is that band direction? It's going to go posterior, all right, that way, a bit of lateral, and trying to get her right up onto that sort of almost thing about where the neck is and getting it into more and more and more flexion this way. So she was sitting into stretches into here, trying to get that out with a bit of drag on here to take up the slack. And you know, this stretch is great for a lot of people with hip range, but for her, it made a massive difference in getting that movement a bit better, which she had lost, okay? It was not like the other side. So this is not fixing a cam impingement, this is getting rid of all the soft tissue work that has been building up over time that is now restricted and it's stopping her getting back to rowing. So she was working a lot on that and getting all that movement back, okay? And that was the first one. Then we work on a bit of hip flexor because she was really tight in the front anyway, just by design, not really using the hips. So again, working on a bit of hip flexor work like that. The band really, really helps her get a little bit extra range on that to try and improve her flexibility in the front. But the major one was trying to replicate exactly what we did at home, it did in the clinic, at home. So she would then get this band in the same direction as basically what I did. So around that sort of hip as high as you can go, and then wriggling back to the point where it was basically she couldn't go any further, and then bringing her hip up into here and doing the same things as I did. Again, staying away from too much pain, just touching on the edges of that FA DIR movement into there. She would go into flexion, she'd go across into straight adduction, she'd go around in that sort of circumduction position. The whole time as maximal tension on there as possible. So again, she was trying to get her joint through that range without aggravating it, and that made a massive difference. Now that's just the stretching. Then we had to get some strengthening work done. Of course, we needed to do a lot of different exercises with Grace because it wasn't just about the hip range and inflammation. She had lost strength in the hip, and most of it was keeping the knee out, as in the ability to keep her knee out, all right? So when she went onto a one-legged squat, of course, her knee used to roll in because she'd lost her hip strength, her lateral abductor hip strength on that side just because of the pain, all right, and not using it and not being in a rowboat. So we had to make sure that strength came back, her knee alignment came back before she even thought about going back to doing rowing practice. So we had to get this whole thing right before she even started that, so she had the strength to then do the exercise. So there was a couple of absolute givens, but one of them was her clams. We had to get her doing clams. Now this, you might think, oh my goodness, I've seen that before a million times, boring as. It was so important for her, okay? Because she, this is like her first exercise that she worked on is to just try and think about not just stretching the band and trying to do this. Because most people do that, they work on the lateral side here. We had to get her working on the glute, okay? So she had to really think about this one. Now, first of all, we started with no resistance, then we added this band here. The trick about this one her, for her, like I said with all clams, is you've got to get the actual activation in the buttock to make any sort of difference, okay? So she had to get her brain re-talking to this because there was so much negative messaging from the hip going back. She had to spend some time trying to get this movement absolutely correct and doing it without compensating, which is the hard part. So 
for her, the trek was pushing through your heels. It was squeezing both butt cheeks. It was trying to think about the clam as an actual clam. So when she opens her knees, she prizes open from the back. And that's sometimes the biggest trick is actually getting the right cueing to get the muscle working, especially when someone's got so much sort of deactivation through the weakness through there. And they go, I just can't feel it, I can't activate it. So we had to work hard on making sure she did that every single session. That was every day for a while. Now it's down about two or three times a week. But just trying to work on teaching her brain to contract that muscle. Because if we get that base there, then we can use it for everything else. And then it's going to be automatic when she's back on the roll. So that was very key. The second thing we've got to get her doing is actually trying to teach her brain once again to control her knee when she's standing. So when she's load bearing, in the boat she's not really load bearing but she is pushing through her feet so it's the same principle. So we need to get her doing a one-legged squat. Now, of course, with a one-legged squat I always like working people on a step-down type maneuver because that works on the eccentric phase which is probably the most important. So for her, she had to work on a step down, meaning keeping her hips level and working on stepping down off the box and coming back up. Now, a lot of people use this for knee. She was using it purely for hip. Nothing wrong with the knee, but her knee did roll in, but because of the hip control. So she had to spend a lot of time getting this right where she could hold that knee stable and then sit back. So bending through the, the hip that's injured, the sore hip, okay, bending through the hip, but maintaining glute control here so she didn't wobble that knee at all, okay? So when she went from extended position through to flexion at the knee and flexion the hip, she didn't A, drop the other hip, didn't roll the knee in. That took her quite a long time. She had to work on top range first, just working on here. And as she got better, she'll go further and further down and eventually right down almost into a lunge. And now she can do it. She can also do it with a band. So once she got that really, really good, we added on some load, which is what we normally do anyway. Add on some load laterally to make this work. There's no point for her adding on vertical load just yet, okay? Her issue is about knee control, keeping that knee out when she's in the boat, making sure it doesn't roll in because, hey, we're not changing the cam in her hip. That's not gonna change, okay? If she goes back doing the same thing with the same weakness, the same tightness, she's gonna get the same problem. So we had to change something. And that was gonna be, one, her strength to hold her knee up, and two, change what she's doing in the boat, which I'll show you in a minute. So this one here, she's now fighting this band. Now you can only do this exercise when you've got enough strength, okay? So when you can control this without the band, then you're allowed to put the band on. Don't jump straight into this one if you haven't got the control on the hip because it's just going to pull your knee in every time or you're going to compensate. So from here, she had to again work on this, fighting that band, making sure she keeps tension on the band all the way through. So yes, she's teaching her brain, when I bend my hip and my knee on a rower, keep my knee in position, find my glute. Okay, that's what she's teaching herself. The more she teaches it, the more strength she gets, the more natural and automatic that is. Okay, so that was one of the other ones we're doing. We're also doing ball squats. You've seen all those before. Again, really important. It keeps the focus on the lateral side of the hip. Remember the abductors? She, her problem is keeping that knee out. We focus out here. So when she's doing one leg ball squat like this, she has to focus again on bending the knee, bending the hip, exactly what you do on a row but she's focusing on keeping that really switched on here by pushing that knee that way. Every time you push your knee into the ball there, you're gonna to have to compensate and work here. Now this is sort of a different way of doing it. We're sort of trying to fight this. So it's almost like an anti-movement, anti-lateral movement here. So the muscle works a little bit different than being on the box, okay? On the box, my knee's pulling out, so I'm getting a sort of a, the load levers down here. This one is a completely different story. So we're getting the best of both worlds by doing these two exercises for her, okay? So she works really, really hard on that one as well. The good news is she's progressed really well. So two weeks ago, she was then working on a BOSU. So what we had to get her doing was dynamically coming over. Everything else has been static, just learning the basics of can you turn that glute on? Can you keep your knees straight? Can you keep your hips straight? Can you fire that muscle up to get some strength? Calm the 
joint down. Now that it's calmed down, she's got heaps more range, we start challenging her a little bit. So now she was working on trying to do a squat on one leg into there. Okay, so in this one, if you don't have the glute strength here, you're just going to drive that knee in with as soon as you load bear through it. Okay, so we're also making one in a squat pattern, two, it's lateral, three, it's unstable. Okay, so she has to work extremely hard to control the knee when she does that. So she's working on lateral step up movements with a wobbly surface. All right, then she was doing the same thing with the band. So one way of doing it is making the surface wobbly, that's your progression. Your second progression is then adding load, which is another stability type movement, but it's one of those ones that's combos, stability load. She was then going through a step up with a band like that. Now, what you don't want, well she, what we don't want for her, is for her to go up and then do that. Okay, because what's that movement? Exactly what we don't want her doing in a rowboat. We don't want her knee, boom, coming in like that in flexion, because that's going to cause her impingement of the hip and blow her hip up. All right, so she had to learn to keep her knee out and then drive through in that position, flexion extension through that position there. Okay, now this is all very sport specific, but it's exactly what she needs, and we're going to translate that into the boat. Other things she was also doing was open chain hip abduction. Now this was more of a warm up type exercise for her. So she's working on trying to get her abductors warmed up. That was in the sort of realms with clams, trying to get that thing fired up, get her open chain work doing, so then she was a bit better when she did a closed chain one. That was a warm up. The other strengthening one she's also working on is a single leg deadlift. So working on getting her single leg deadlift work, just general strength, standing on one leg, which made her work a little bit more on a hammy and a glute, which she needed anyway. Remember, with these exercises, it's not just about one muscle group when you've got pain hip. A lot of the other ones were down as well. So she needed to work on her glute max, she needed to work on her hammies just as much as here. Obviously, this is the primary focus for the knee control, but the power through that leg, she still needed to work on as well. So she was doing other glute work and hammy work and posterior chain work alongside this because the whole thing packaged up into her getting better as well as setting the joint down. Now, now that she's better, she's got six weeks before she's actually in the water. So she's gonna go back to rowing. Come back out here. As we discussed before, she's going to go back to surf boat rowing. She's good enough. She's got her range back. There's still a little bit of pain. It's high a little bit of pain. Her strength is way up. Her control is left equals right. Her range is heaps better. Now we've got to practice. We've got to put all that into practice and practice her sport. Now surf bones don't start for six weeks. Great. We don't want her in the water straight away. We want her practicing her skill. Lucky for her, she's got an erg that she can use to practice surf boat rowing. But if you remember, she got injured on the erg, not on the surf boat. So we had to drill down, what are you doing on an erg that's different to the surf boats? And we know that her feet were straight. Now, you know, a trainer would say, well, you've got to keep your legs straight when you're in an erg because that's when you're going to get the most power. But that doesn't matter. She's not in a straight rowboat. She's in a surf boat and she's coming out the side like that. So her leg naturally goes outwards, okay, which has probably saved her hip down the track. It's only when she went to erg and kept her foot in straight and she got more impingement. So we're going to train her like she's going to perform. She needs to be on that erg and train her brain to keep her knee out, okay? So she had to slow it down and make sure that when she was coming into here, she was not there, okay? So her brain, when she went, just went straight into here and found it very hard to then go into that. She's so used to these patterns, we have to change the way her brain thinks about every stroke. Imagine how many strokes they do a minute. Every stroke has to be out, okay? Not ridiculous, but out enough to clear that hip to get the range. The other thing that was interesting about this is in a surf boat, I say, where is your catch point on a surf boat? So where does the oar hit the water? And she compared to an erg. And she got to the point of going, oh, it's about sort of here is where I catch it. And where do you go on an erg? And she goes, oh, well, I, go to, I go to there, okay? So on an erg, one, she was keeping her knee straight. Two, she was going too far into flexion. Now that's normal for a normal hip, but for her, it didn't like it. 
And she doesn't do that on a surf boat either. So why would you go too far on an erg if you don't do that in practice? So she has to learn now to also stop on the, on the erg and not go basically all the way like this. Okay, she can't go all the way in and go into full flexion. She has to tell her brain to stop at a point and then come back. So her whole rhythm of acceleration and deceleration has to then change. She has to go and practice that. Luckily, she's got six weeks to do that. The other thing we're going to do is put on some resistance to that. So once she's got that control, okay, and she'll do that for maybe one or two weeks and get that rhythm better, she's going to now build some strength because it's all well and good say, oh, just keep your knee out and do that. She needs to also learn to keep her strength, the strength needs to increase to do that. She's learned the strength inside. She's learned the strength and all that, but she then has to put it into practice. Now, the best way for her, and this may look crazy, but the best way for her is to use a band around her knees. So the final stage for her training at the moment is to put a normal clam band around her knees. Now, this is actually a special one. This is quite a thin one. We don't want a super thick one you'd use for clams because it's just too heavy. So she, she needs to do something that is going to do two things. It's going to give her awareness about keeping her knee up. Okay, so she's got something to pull on. She's got something to look at. She's got an awareness of, oh, okay, I've got to stretch that. It also needs to give her enough resistance to generate some strength. Okay, so when she's in the boat, or I should say, when she's in the erg, she is now going to work on stretching that band, okay? So every time she rows, she's got some feedback here. So when she comes in like this, the first thing she's not allowed to do is go bang, all right? So she's got to go out with her right knee, stay out with her right knee, and then come in. She can come in there because she's not in flexion, right? She doesn't have to be out there. You can't be anyway when you go straight. You have to come straight. But when she comes in, she starts the process of that going out going that way, think about where she's, and she's allowed to go over to the left because that's what she's doing. And then when she pulls, she has to keep the tension on the band and then slowly bring it in. So it's a process of slowly going out and slowly coming in, okay? Now, some people might think, oh, but then she's you know, lopsided. So is a golfer, so is a tennis player, okay? Every single side of sport is lopsided. She just needs to train it so she's strong she has to stretch so she doesn't compensate, and she has to practice that movement so she doesn't get injured. So that's that one for today. I'll let you know how she goes.